Hey guys, Mr. Ridgeway here. It is finally time for us to start on our honor and slavery projects. This video is here to be a supplementary resource for you in case you ever need a re-explanation of what the project is like or how you do it or um, you know any kind of ideas or suggestions or brainstorming that you might want to utilize um, to help you develop, come up with, and kind of create your project. Uh, so, what we're going to do, and what this video is going to do, is kind of take you through the broad outlines of the project, as well as through maybe some of the different options that you might have, and then as well how you will finally turn it in when you are done with it. Now, this project, right off the bat, I want to mention, you have plenty of time to get it done. It's not due until after fall break. Uh, as well, it is not designed to be a punishing type of project in any way. This is a time for you to be creative, to show off what you know, and as well as to uh, you just kind of be able to, again, demonstrate and um, do so in a way that you really feel like you have some kind of creative outlet uh, to be able to do so. So. Uh, let's go ahead. I'm going to click right here where it says overview and rubric uh, here, and we're just going to jump right into what the actual project is like. Okay, uh, so let's deal with the overview first. Okay, uh, I know you can read, hopefully, uh, and uh, despite that, I'm going to go ahead and read this just because I want to emphasize the big parts of what we're, we're trying to accomplish here. So it says, Honor and Slavery has taken us on a journey through the ethics, culture, and behaviors of those living in the southern colonies and states. Understanding this world has occupied a lot of the focus of this book. As Greenberg, the author, admits, overall my goal has been the goal of a translator. Below, you'll find a project, actually several different ones, that will push you beyond the simple understanding. Uh, you'll be applying your new knowledge and skills, and this is the big part, to create an opportunity for others to learn about the world of honor in a meaningful, applicative way. So it, what I wouldn't tell you is that you need to probably think of this as you're coming up with some kind of a tool or um, a method, a way for somebody to uh, understand this world and all of its different components. And this is going to be through some kind of an activity of your design. Now, there's a lot of different ways this can look, um, but overall, your project needs to accomplish three goals in particular. Number one, interact with the system of honor in a meaningful way. And what I mean by that is it, it, the user of whatever you're going to make or um, you know, uh, produce or consume uh, needs to be able to actually explain how honor works, like what some of its component parts are, its behaviors, and a really, really good product is going to have this user experience honor rather than kind of directly and boringly be taught it through something like a paper or a presentation or something like that. Okay. Uh, how also um, we want, for example, uh, your information to still be accurate and well sourced. So yes, you're going to see there's lots of different projects and outlets that you have. But for example, if you decide to do a skit and you write up the script for that skit, um, it's probably not going to make sure, like again, um, like or you probably need to make sure, like while you're doing it, that you actually provide some sources in there to actually back up what you're saying. And you can easily do that through some parentheses. You just put honor and slavery, comma, chapter two, or something like that. As well as, um, you know, maybe some outside explanation, like a short Google Doc that kind of says, like, here's why in this skit this particular character interacted in this particular way and said these kind of particular things. These kind of like extra little like supplementary things, especially if you're designing something experiential, is really, really important because it's going to help the user understand, like, for example, if they're playing a board game, why that board game is designed in the way that it is, and why all of a sudden they lost and their nose got pinched and that was the end of the game. Uh, you know, just being like flat out losing at that point would be really, really confusing for somebody who's actually playing. And then, of course, the third goal, it needs to look clean and professional and not like trash, uh, like you put it together at the last minute. So as long as you accomplish those three things, your project's going to be awesome and amazing. Uh, what I want you to do before anything else, I want you to actually brainstorm some different ideas that you might try to utilize. Um, I've already mentioned a couple, but there's a survey here that you can take. Uh, once you've done that, there are a whole host of options, and I've given 15 that you could do, um, but I was discussing with students um, and have discussed with students lots and lots of other ideas that they might be able to utilize. So briefly, I'm just going to talk about some of these different methods. Um, it's everything from like creating a handbook to making a choose-your-own-adventure game or a board game, writing a, um, a script for a skit, 
or um, writing a children's book, a diary, a rap, a song, a poem, newspapers, making an explosion box, making a video or like a trailer for a movie, um, sketch notes, making an art gallery where you like explain again like the artwork and why it's there, um, writing a short story or making a comic or a draw my life if you kind of remember um, when those uh, videos were big on YouTube. These are all different options that you can do. Um, and I've had students who've taken um, like songs and made karaoke versions over them and kind of like repurposed the words. I've had students shoot music videos before for this, um, as well as, again, like poems don't require any, you know, video at all. Uh, the important thing is that especially with some of these experiential things like um, like a children's book or, um, for example, like a rap, that you're taking the time outside of that work, maybe in like a like a supplementary document at the end or like a page at the end or something like that where you're helping the person understand why you had the certain things in your story that you did. And that's really, to me, where you're showing uh, that you have read the text and you have a good command of evidence and know like how that system of honor works. But again, it's kind of about all about designing this experience for somebody. Now, what topics you want to talk about inside your games or experiences or things like that is completely up to you. The subtitles of the book is going to be extremely helpful there. Um, I've also tried to provide models in here, but if you need more models, you can look around my room. I will make sure that I have some set out for you that you can consult and look at. Um, and other than that, that's pretty much the gist of the project. Uh, there are lots of links that I'm going to try to provide and, um, you know, like extra kind of like cutaways to um, extra resources that I'm going to try to send you. Um, so please be on the lookout for those. My goal here today is to get this brainstorming started for you, as well as to kind of get you um, kind of considering and consulting everything that's going to go actually into this project. Because for example, if you do want to do a diary, you need to start thinking about like, well, how many entries do I need to show um, how dressing as a woman was a dangerous and yet completely acceptable person for uh, com a completely acceptable thing for a person in the South to do. And you're gonna, you are gonna need to kind of start to like think through some of these things about how you're actually gonna design your experience. Uh, the due date, if you look on Canvas, is after uh, fall break. Uh, but I wouldn't recommend that you wait all the way through fall break to get started on it. Do some work before, begin to sketch things out, and then use that week after fall break to kind of wrap things up. Um, so with that, uh, that's my brief explanation from here. Again, today is kind of a brainstorming kind of thinking session and, uh, good luck with your projects.